So, good afternoon everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, efficient and large-scale infrastructure monitoring with tracing. So, my name is Julien Desfossés, I work at Efficious. And uh, as part of my work, I'm working on building a tracing infrastructure for large-scale monitoring. So the content today, so you will see a quick overview of tracing and LTTNG, the, and we'll especially fo focus on the features dedicated for cloud providers and large-scale infrastructure operators, and then we'll detail two uh, main features for this topic. Then we'll see well, how to integrate tracing with infrastructure monitoring, some performance results, uh, a tool to help you as a system administrator uh, read traces and uh, some expected fu future work. So tracing, first of all. So uh, just to plug that. The tracing is the process of recording runtime information without stopping the, the process. We usually use the tracing as part of the development process. And today, that's one of my points, is to show you that we can also use tracing for monitoring and debugging production infrastructure, not just debugging uh, during the development the phase. If some of you were at the talk of David this morning, maybe you'll see some uh, <laughs> overlap between the content, because that's... Uh, we, we work together on the same set of features, but this presentation is more oriented for infrastructure and system administrators. So you should see some complements between the, the two presentations. For tracing, of course, we have lots of alternatives. So HTNG, of course, but also perf, ftrace, system tap, ftrace. You have lots of uh, lots of alternatives. Today, I'm going to focus on LTTNG. So LTTNG 2.x, if some of you knew LTTNG before the 2.0 release, it's a all new set of uh, tools and uh, features. So the main point of the LTTNG 2.x was to have the CTF output, so a common trace format for writing the trace and a common user, user interface to interact with the tracer. So <coughs> It's a kernel and user space tracer. So at the same time, you can record the kernel trace and user space trace, and then combine the two traces during the analysis to view the results synchronized between what happened during in the kernel and what, what's happened in the user space application. We also soon have the Java tracing. So Java will be able to produce events inside the trace. And we support uh, KVM virtualization trace points and uh, combine tracing between KVM virtual machine from outside and from inside the guest. Okay. <laughs> okay. So by design, it's really focused to be a low overhead tracer. So that's most of our work is to make sure that we can run the software in production server and avoid dis disrupting too much the, uh, the operating system and the program that are being traced. For the kernel tracer, now it's uh, modules only. So we have to say that again, but we don't need anymore to recompile the, <laughs> the kernel. Uh, before ltng 2.x, we had to apply patches on the kernel and then rebuild. Now it's only modules, and most of the big distros are starting to ship the packages for the, the toolchain. So a quick overview of how to create a kernel trace. So today I'm really going to focus mainly on kernel tracing because that's where we'll get the monitoring data. But of course, if you want to have custom uh, trace points for your application and then extract metrics from there. That's exactly the same process. So that's just as an example, but keep in mind that you can extend that for all your needs. So in this example, we just create a trace. We enable the sketch switch event. So for uh, each scheduling event, we'll see an event in the trace. 
and we enable all the system calls for the host. The a difference between S trace and LTT engine in this case is that it's uh, system wide tracing. So it's not targeted for just one process. We are going to trace the whole system. Once we have enabled the kernel events, we could also enable user space events if we had uh, an application already instrumented with user space tracer. But otherwise, we just start the trace. In this case, we wait for two seconds, stop the trace, and view. The, the view should display a text dump of the trace. i show you an example just after. But here you can see that we generated <coughs> 8,000 events in two seconds on this laptop. So that's high throughput tracer. So you have to keep in mind that during the <laughs> presentation that it's a lot of information that we generate. And then when the we are done with the trace, we just destroy it. I, if we want after the stop, we could also start again to continue tracing, but that's an example. So three examples of the of the trace I just generated before. So it was sketch switch and system calls. So you can see here that we have the sysread, so a read system call. So the current process on the CPU ID3 generated a system call, and you have here the parameters for this uh, system call. Another example is the open. So Again, on the CPU ID3, you can see that this, the current process opened this file uh, with these flags and mode. And for the sketch switch event, we can see that on the CPU ID1, the current task is going from swapper1 to RCU OS0. So that's just an example to show you, but with the LTTNG list dash K, you can see all the events that you can enable during the tracing. And it's all trace events that are already compiled inside the kernel. So you don't need anything to do. We just, with the module, we just attach probes to LTT, uh, trace event already in, in the kernel. So now I'm going to focus on using LTTNG for cloud and monitoring and infrastructure monitoring. So I extracted here four uh, milestones and four features that I consider really important for the cloud and the monitoring infrastructure. So in December 2012, we introduced the trace streaming. So in the previous example, I was writing the trace on the local disk. With this feature, we can now extract the trace to a remote host. So we inside the LTTNG create, you can add the dash capital U, and then uh, a net network address, and it will send the trace to this host. So instead of having to write the trace on the local machine, you can just extract it and then read it from elsewhere. Trace file rotation. So in the default mode, when you create a trace, it's for eternity. So <laughs> you are great until the destroy. So you are writing in a huge trace file. You are continuously appending data to trace file. So it can become really huge. And if you want to use the tracing as a monitoring backend, you maybe will want to have tracing session that lasts for all the, the life of the server. So you definitely don't want to append trace at this rate of uh, generating events. So tra trace file rotation is like in TCP dump. You have the on this screen buffer and you just reuse trace file once you are done with it. So you can say that you just want to keep the last uh, five gigabytes of, tra of trace and after that it start overwriting the oldest events. Then recently in September we introduced in LTTNG 2.3 the snapshots. So snapshots are combined with the what we call the flight recorder. So it's a tracer that only works in memory, so it's only recording events in memory, never writing it on disk. And then when you want, you can just ask to create a snapshot and it dumps the trace on disk. So we'll see an example after that. And the feature we are currently working on is the live trace reading. So that's the capability of reading the trace while it's being recorded. If you look here, we had to stop the trace before being able to read it. With the live streaming, it's no longer necessary. So you can just 
connect the viewer to the to the process, and you will be able to to read the trace while it's being recorded. So, LTNG as a monitoring tool. The first thing I want to show you for this topic is the crash dump. So, using the snapshot I just introduced, we can now take snapshot of what happened on the system in the last minute, seconds, depends on the size of your in-memory ring buffer. So for example, if you want to keep an history of uh, 100 megabytes of trace data in memory, you can just create a session with this parameter and then on certain event, maybe just a seg segmentation fault or alert from your IDS or anything you want, you can ask to create a snapshot and it will create a trace on disk. So until you create the snapshot, nothing is happening, but except we are writing in memory. But when you want, you just dump the snapshot. We have a, a small script that's called dump and ender. So you can just add that to the core pattern in the proxy kernel. And then for each, uh, each time the system would like to generate uh, a core dump, it will call the script that will take the snapshot. So in addition to having your core dump, you also be able to see what was happening on the system before and up to the moment where the core dump was uh, generated. So since uh, it's the system-wide tracer, you have the kernel event that you enable, but you can also have the user space event. So if the application that crashed was instrumented with LTTNG UST, you will also have your last events in there. So maybe it will help you to detect what was the source of the, the corner. A quick example of how to create a session for flight recorder and snapshots. So it's basically the same interface as before. So you just create a session, but this time you add the dash dash snapshot option to say to the ring buffer that you are writing in overwrite mode, so and only in memory. We don't want to write the trace when we start. We just want to write it in memory. Then we just add the same events, so the skip switch and the syscall, just like before, and then we start the trace. After that, the the tracer is only writing in memory, so you can do whatever you want. And then when you want to dump a snapshot, so you know that something happened on the system, maybe you detected a unusual latency on your system or a general fault or maybe your Nagios monitoring told you that there was something weird happening, you just record a snapshot. Depending on the amount of events you enabled and the size of the buffer you, you configured, you will have uh, a trace that will have some history. So it depends, uh, of course, of how much, because we are always overwriting. You can take as many snapshots as you want. So you can see that for this session, that was the the name of the session, default name of the session, we generated this folder. But uh, you can see that it's timestamp. So you can just generate as many snapshots as you want. It will, if you take two snapshots, in the same period, you will see overlapping events because we don't flush the, the buffer when you record. So you can, if you just record and the older data is still in the buffer, you will see it again. So that's, that's it for the flight recorder and snapshot session. So you can see that how you can add that to your monitoring and to your uh, IDS system maybe to and also to your core dump uh, ender to extract data. The second part is the real-time monitoring. So it's the live tracing I was talking about before. So it's to be able to read the trace while we are recording it. It can be either a local or remote session. And the only parameter different from the normal session creation is the flush period. So it's a timer that tells the consumer of the LTTNG tracer to flush the trace at a defined period. So you can 
be assured that you will receive at least information, notification that something happened on your system. So if you have huge buffers and low throughput uh, events, you don't need to wait that the buffer is full to receive the data. You can just uh, configure the, this period to say that every one second you want to flush uh, everything that's in memory. For the infrastructure, you see that it's only based on TCP, so it's completely distributed and can be anywhere on the network. So in this example here, I show three servers with the LTTNG session D running, and they all connect to the LTTNG relay D. So they are all sending that trace to the, the remote uh, process, so it can be on this one of these machines on, or a de dedicated machine. And then we connect a viewer to this relay. When we do that, we list the session currently established by the servers you see up there. And then we can attach to one of these sessions. Once we are attached, we start receiving the events, either from the start of the trace or for, from now, so from the period, from the moment you attach to the trace. So if you have a trace that's running for years or months, you don't need to process the trace from the beginning. You can just start right here. So once again, the, the commands to create such a session. So you see that the only main difference in the session creation is the live parameter, so the timer. In this case, it's in microseconds. So it, in this case, it's two seconds. So every two seconds, we want the consumer to flush the data. If data is available in the buffer, you will receive the events. If it's not, you will receive a beacon that tells you that no data was generated for this period of time. So you know what's happening on your system. And then you have the dash capital U. Oops. So to tell that you want to send the trace to, the, to this address. On this server, you have the LTTNG ReAD that's listening. So for now, it's the default port, but you can configure the, the port you want. And it's running and receiving traces for all the servers up there that have a session configured like that. And finally, on the viewer machine, so it can be on your desktop, on the sysadmin desktop, actually. You can just connect to the ReAD with the one viewer, it's an example I show you today, but you can have a different uh, viewer for that. It's an open protocol, so you can just implement the viewer you want and connect to the relay, and then you will see all the sessions established and connect to the one you want. Uh, okay. From the performance side, like I showed you in here, and before, I told you that in two seconds, I generated 8,000 events on one single laptop. So you can imagine with this graph that the LTTNG ReadyD can receive a lot, <laughs> big amount of data. So of course, you have to design the uh, monitoring you want. So you maybe don't want to have all the information I was showing, showing before. And if you want, you will probably want to have multiple LTTNG related. So maybe for a set of servers, you will have dedicated servers, but maybe you will have also uh, UST events, so user space events for your application that are generating a lot less of data. So you have to, to make sure that the infrastructure you are using can process the, that amount of data. But I'm going to show you what's the impact on a single server with the tracing. So in this benchmark, I was using the SysBench benchmark, and the, especially the MySQL test. So it's a test that's doing, uh, I don't remember the amount, but a lot of uh, read and write requests to the to a MySQL database. And it starts from two threads to 64 threads. So every time we record how many read and write requests uh, we could do to the database. So we'll start by just doing the test on this single machine. So it's a quad-core i7. And then we do the same benchmark with the flight recorder recording 
a snapshot every 30 seconds and then the streaming trace to the to a remote server so with the relay and then writing the trace on a dedicated disk during this test we record the sketch switch events and all the system calls of the machine so that's exactly the example I showed you that generated the 8,000 events per s uh, two seconds. So that's exactly the same test with these three configurations of LTTNG. And then the same test with the S-trace attached to the MySQL process. So just to give you uh, an idea of the performance, maybe you already have used S-trace uh, uh, in production. You know it works, but you also know that it slows down the system quite a bit. So that's just a comparison, but keep in mind that for MySQL we are only tracing MySQL for with the trace with LTTNG we are tracing the whole system. This test runs for 50 minutes, and when we are in the configuration where we record the snapshot, we generate approximately seven megabytes of trace. Uh, so, uh, and we generate uh, 100 snapshots during the 50 minutes, so one snapshot every 30 seconds. In the configuration, we, uh, when we use S-Trace, at the end, we generated a 5.4 gigabytes trace with 61 million events, and with LTTNG, we generated 6.8 gigabyte trace with 257 million events. So around lots, <laughs> lots more events, uh, around four times more events generated with LTTNG than with S-Trace, because LTTNG was tracing the whole system, s trace one only tracing the MySQL process. So the results are easy to interpret. We have uh, <laughs> no overhead with this configuration of LTTNG. So you can see that the curve for no tracing, flight recorder, streaming, and tracing to a dedicated disk. So we are not tra writing the trace on the same disk as the database. Uh, you can see that we don't have any uh, overhead uh, compared to the baseline. So you can see that at uh, 64 threads, we have around, uh, I don't remember the figure, but 15,000 requests per second, even with this tracing activated. If you compare that to S-Trace, that's only tracing MySQL, you can see that it's around uh, 9,000 even. Now, if you if we use the exact same test, but we write the trace on disk, uh, remember that we generate 5.4 and 6.8 gigabytes trace. Uh, the performance is a lot worse <laughs> because we are sharing the database and the trace output. So the first curve, the blue curve, is the baseline, so no tracing. That's this one. And the yellow curve is the S-trace, and red is LTTNG. So you can see that for most of the time, S-trace is more efficient than LTTNG because it's writing a lot less events than LTTNG. And then starting at 32 threads, you can see that the performance doesn't uh, grow with the even when we double the number of threads. That's because the system is saturated. You can see that the system cannot generate any more um, events. The CPU and disk are both uh, saturated. So that's an example of what's, uh, what we can do with tracing. You can see that if you are in good uh, production conditions, so you are writing the trace on the de dedicated disk or on the network or just in memory, and not too much event, it's sketch switch and system calls, you can have uh, LTTNG running in uh, production servers. Of course, that's a uh, use case where the most of the load is on the disk. It's not CPU-based test. It's really more I.O. and uh, I.O.-focused disk. So, of course, the impact is a lot less with tracing. If we did a micro benchmark on just the CPU usage, you would see a much bigger overhead because for each uh, trace point, we have to steal some CPU time to write the events. Uh, another example of the performance, but in this case, it's for virtualization. And so you, in this case, we have two KVM virtual machines on the same physical host. 
Uh, one machine is a Apache web server, and the other one just downloads uh, five gigabytes uh, file with the wget. We use exactly the same instrumentation as before, so sketch switch and system calls, and we see absolutely no overhead between the writing the trace and just not doing the any tracing. So once again, it's a test that's I/O intensive. But you also see a lot of CPU usage between the because of the virtualization and the exchange between the, the two contexts. One example really interesting about the what we can do with such uh, traces in uh, virtualization. It's a work done by uh, Mohamed Gebay uh, at Polytechnic in Montreal, and I want to show you that because that's more. Uh, offline trace, so you record the trace and then you analyze it, but it's really interesting. So you can see that in the left column here, we have two virtual machines. We have the QMU with the, uh, with the clone. In the first virtual machine, we have two CPUs, and second one, we just have one CPU. The vCPU0 uh, in each virtual machine is pinned to the same physical CPU in the physical machine. So they are sharing the same physical processor, and this one is uh, alone. In this first VM, we start two CPU burn, so they are using 100% of the CPU, and this one only one, so one CPU burn per CPU. So you can see that the, this one, since it's alone and not shared, you can see that it's running all the time. But you can see that the vCPU0 that's sharing the physical, uh, same physical CPU is constantly being preempted between the, the two because of the scheduler that's giving CPU time to the two processes. Yeah, so that's the kind of example you can quickly see that your, your system is not maybe running efficiently or at least you have the, a good idea of what's happening and why sometimes it can be slow. If we expand the, the the second machine here, so if we list all the processes inside this virtual machine, you can see that at the end here we see the CPU burn process, and that's the view from inside the virtual machine. So we record the trace from inside and from outside. From inside the virtual machine, you can see that the CPU burn process is running at 100% of the time. So you can see that it's, it believes that it's running all the time. But if we look up here, we see that it's getting preempted, but it doesn't know that. So from inside the host, you can see that it's running at 100% of the CPU, but from the physical uh, CPU perspective from the host, you see that actually it's maybe around 50% of the, of the time. So you can see quickly what's the was slowing down your your virtual machine. Next, I want to show you the LTNG top tool. So that's to come back more for the for the sysadmin uh, track and the virtualization and monitoring track. So LTNG top is a top like interface to read LTNG kernel traces. We have the CPU usage per process file activity, K probe support, uh, per, per process performance counter display. We can navigate in the trace second by second. We can pause, come back in time, read offline traces, so traces that you recorded and then you want to replay on your machine. Or you can now collect, connect to a remote process attached to a session and interact with the uh, read the current session. We also have an experimental in-memory live tracing, but as I said, it's experimental. <laughs> it requires out of three uh, LTTNG tools and bubble trace patches, so it's not compiled by default, but it can work and it completely bypasses the network live reading, so you just read in-memory from the tracer. So I'm going to show you a quick demo of LTTNG top and the live reading. So in this, yeah, maybe just zoom. In this console, I'm inside the virtual machine, K KVM virtual machine, 
and I'm going to start recording a trace for this machine and then I'm going to view this trace remotely. The, the commands I'm going to use are this one. So first create a session, live session, so a session that can be read while it's being recorded. So we have a timer of two seconds. So every two seconds the consumer will send a packet to the viewer to the relay to inform if data was generated during the last uh, two seconds or if no data. Um, and I'm going to send this trace to a remote host. For LTT and GTOP, we have a set of events that are required. So that's the big list here. That's the event we use to generate the state of the system. So with the sketch switch, you know which CPU, which process is running on which CPU. But you can al you also need some uh, more information to have, for example, the state dump of the pro of the system. So, at the beginning of the trace, what were what were the processes enabled uh, already alive on the system? What were the file descriptor already open in each process and all of that? We also want to have the system calls. In this case, it's just for detecting which process opens which file and how many bytes they are writing in each file, and etc. And then we need some context. So I didn't talk about context before, but that's just extra information attached to the payload of each packet, of each event. So for example, for each uh, sketch switch, you will see all of this uh, information. So the PID, so the current PID of the process, the proc current proc name, so the name of the binary that's running, the thread ID and parent PID of the current process for each uh, event. And also we have the support for perf counters. So in this case, I'm going to record the perf ma major faults while I'm tracing. So for each process, we sample the perf counter and output this information. So you can quickly see what's the behavior of your application in regards to the, this perf counter. Uh, usually, I add more performance counter, but in this case, it's a virtual machine, so not all the perf counters are available for us, but it will just give you uh, an idea of what's happening. And then, so we start the trace. So, let's start that. So, a lot of output, so that you can see that all the events were generated, all the system calls are going to be traced, and these are the context we added. Now on the remote machine, so that's just my laptop here, but it could be the monitoring station or a sysadmin desktop. You connect to the relay. In the near future, we will have the list of the session currently running on this relay. For now, I'm just attaching to the first one, but uh, it's the next feature on the list. So. I'm just connecting to the relay on localhost, and then you see what are the processes currently running on the machine. You see that the list of the processes just got, uh, got slowly populated. That's because uh, it only records what's happening currently. So if a process is not doing anything, it doesn't show up in this list for now. So that's a top-like interface. So you can navigate inside here. You can uh, hit enter to see what's the details of the process. So for example, the TNG consumer you can just enter that. You can see the performance counter. So in here, we have the perf major faults that I activated. For now, no, nothing to, to see. We have the IO top. So how many bytes uh, are read and written per process, and uh, kprobe if I added the kprobe support. Now I'm going just to do uh, a apt-get update in this machine, and we should see quickly, you see uh, that HTTP, basic 2 apt-get, all of that are going to, are happening on the system right now while I'm doing the apt-get. So if I pause now the dis display, I can come back in time and see what was happening at, the st at this time. So you, up here you have the timestamp, and you can just come back, go f back and forth in time to see what's happening. So here you have the basic two 
see that it just loaded this uh, library http maybe I will see some um, and then we should see some dpkg so that just gives you uh, an overview of you know just you can just navigate in the trace and see what was happening and then you can unpause and it uh, goes back to reading the trace one second at a time and now I'm going to destroy the, the trace if uh, we could also read the trace from the host because right now we are we sent the trace to the relay D so if we want to read the trace again we could just look at this trace and that's the same trace that we just processed so if somewhere in there you add the event you are interested in maybe you add a crash uh, big latency something you can just use that to read the trace you can have, you have the timestamp uh, up here so you know the period of time maybe you just want to to know what happened during uh, this particular second maybe you see here you have cron that run maybe sometimes it's a good case of latency and so you can just quickly see what was happening then if you want to dig deeper then you can read the trace in the text dump format maybe or in a tmf tool that's more a graphical tool to help you dig deeper inside the trace but if you prefer the text dump, uh, you can also just grab here and look at the timestamp you just detected before. So that's the idea of uh, LTT and GTOP. It can just help to the sysadmin to go inside the, the trace. You don't even need to uh, connect to the trace uh, to the server by SSH. You can just connect to your monitoring desk and uh, access the trace while it's being recorded. Um, I'm going to show you an example of how to integrate all of that in the uh, monitoring infrastructure. So that's just an example, but to show you the potential of using tracing in production in large-scale environments. I don't know if you know Graphite, the Graphite maybe, the monitoring tool. In this case, we it's just a quick display to show you that we ask the the graphite to display the last 20 minutes uh, of block events so just with the single request up here we ask to display us what was happening in the last 20 minutes for the blocks and you see in the legend that what was the so the the trace point and how many events for each trace point were generated during this period of time so you can combine that with your user space trace. You can combine that with other tracing information and just help you pinpoint really what was the the problem if you detected a problem. The future work is to integrate with such tools. So Graphite is one example, but we also have Nagios in mind. We want to, for example, you may be interested in the page faults for one specific application. So you could just hook the tracer to uh, extract metrics for only page faults for only one process and just have uh, really low level metrics from large scale and uh, high amount of data. For now it's just uh, beta and uh, just example like that, but that's definitely a need for the, the future of uh, merging the tracing and debugging and monitoring domain together. Also we want to filter the the trace because 8000 events per second is maybe too much for <laughs> large scale infrastructure so you want to have a really uh, efficient way to extract data and just the relevant data you don't necessarily want all the system calls on your system maybe you just want the system calls for one or two specific applications and then compute statistics from that or whatever you want. Then distribute the analysis. For now, you saw that 
I connected the TNG top to do the analysis, but in large scale infrastructure, we want to have uh, analysis on specific nodes and maybe not on the final step of the chain. Maybe we have uh, the relay that's going to do aggregate the events and pre-compute the data so we can have a really quick way to access the statistics. Remote control of the tracer. For now it's SSH, but that's definitely something that we are working on to connect to a remote tracer and then enable events. We also want to have the triggers to, on specific event, maybe we want to add uh, additional trace points. So for example, you detect a latency in a one subsystem. You might be interested in adding more information to the subsystem to pinpoint exactly where in that system the, the problem is coming. So it can be with the snapshot, but also start, stop the tracer, add events to the current running session, monitoring session. So if you want to install it, uh, you have packages for most of the distros. For Ubuntu, we also have a daily build PPA with LTTNG top. LTTNG top is not in the default uh, packages, but you have the PPA for that, or of course from the source. The 2.4 release of LTTNG that uh, has all of these features uh, expected for uh, mid-November, so it should be soon. So if you have uh, any questions, uh, I'm here. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I use the <coughs> mode, what? I also have the same problem with this, like in the snapshot case, you have the trace data might overlap. The live mode, you have two ways to attach to a live session. You can either connect from the start of the trace, so you will receive all the trace from the start, or you can have the, you can attach to a session from the mom, uh, from the moment you send the attach command, so you won't see anything before the, this moment. So it's if it's a continuous uh, stream of events, and I don't need to uh, figure out on my own which ones are overlapping, if they would. No, if no, if you just connect a new uh, viewer to the uh, running session, yeah. it will start from the moment you are running. So if you have two viewers connected to the same session, you will you would see the same events, of course. But if you only one have one viewer, you will see from the moment you are starting. So if you just collect uh, some, uh, sometimes you will just have from the moment you are attaching to the session. So the only thing that could happen in the worst case is that I'm missing events because I'm uh, sending the packets not uh, often enough, right? Uh, from the consumer to the reader, yes. Yeah. Yes, but for, for that you can increase the size of the buffer, and but that's really the, the streaming path. From the viewer side, you won't lo lose any event because that's the viewer that's requesting data packets from the relay. Mm -hmm. So in this side, you, you won't lose anything. In here, you saw that it was refreshing every one second, but that's the viewer that's requesting data from the relay. So in this case, you don't miss any events. That's just sending events. Any other question? Mm -hmm. I saw on uh, the last slide, it looks like you guys are really enhancing the, the correlation engine part of LL, LTTNG. <laughs> Will that in the future, you say you're going to incorporate Nagios and things like that in the future. Will that also encompass uh, some of the packet capture devices on the market? Um, there are, there's a lot of Linux based ones like Impulse and Nixon. Mm -hmm. I think we have a track from hardware tracing, so maybe that's the part, but the idea here is to have a common trace format. That's the CTF part I was talking about. That's the format we extract data in. If the such tracer can output in CTF format with accurate timestamp, we could correlate the traces from kernel and user space and uh, but the, the viewer I'm working on and all the viewer we are really focus on the common trace format. We, we have a, a tool to convert pickup file from pickup file to CTF events. So you can generate events from uh, pickup files. So maybe if these tracers are uh, able to write pickups or CTF directly, we could have analysis for, for that. That's available today? The pickup to CTF, yes, it's available. 
and we also have the syslog to CTF also. So you could, in the same trace, match the syslog with the kernel and user space trace, all of that in the same uh, interface. Of course, after that, if you want to build analysis based on that, you have to add the module because we don't know the what the events correspond to, but that's uh, that's the work we are doing with LTT and GTOP and all of that. So, Is it possible to replace TCP with UDP? Not for now, but the, we uh, the, we designed the protocol to have two two ports. So we have uh, one TCP port that's mandatory, that's the control. So we don't want to lose any of these events. But the data part could be UDP. It's not implemented, but it was designed to support UDP as well. Yes, yes. The, uh, all of uh, all of uh, the the demo and uh, screenshot I was showing was using LTTNG master, so it's usable for now. It's not yet uh, frozen, but it's usable as of now. And all of the tools, including LTTNG top, that's not yet distributed, but all of that is on the public Git in master branch. So if you want to try that. Uh, have fun and <laughs> send me feedback if you want. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. uh, how can, if you would like to trace a, a, a program, but it's a multi threaded program written in Java, mm -hmm. is it possible to create some rules that, you know, just follow this one? Show me the state of. Um, For Java and kernel, we don't have the filtering support. Okay. But with the. Uh, yet. <laughs> but it's. it's uh, <laughs> we want to have that. And in user space tracer, we have the filters, but not yet for kernel and, uh, or Java. But you can, it's a GUL interface to export your your trace. So the you could also filter from the, the application side, but uh, not for now. Can you talk about triggering before as future improvement trigger? Uh, is the idea that I can trigger, like start recording, end recording, based on LTTG events itself? Yes, that yeah. would be the idea. So I could use even if filters to say if the payload is between this mm -hmm. threshold, then. Yes. Well, that's not useful. That's the initial phase. After that, we want to extend that with the uh, iPhone interpreter and maybe do more complex analysis both on the trace system and the relay. Yeah, it can go very, very efficiently. Yeah. Okay. Basically, it gives you the option that you can always use the user space trace point to say, and from that point on. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I just saw that uh, we only have one minute left, so uh, if you want to come after, we can <laughs> continue the, the questions. Thank you. <laughs>